What is up guys, it's Brindamaster here and welcome to today's video. If you do enjoy the video then don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and hit all the links up down below to Twitch and Discord. Enjoy the video! Hey guys and welcome to my AFK Ascension Creatures money making guide. In this guide I'm going to show you how to effectively and efficiently kill Ascension Creatures to make a nice 6 to 8 mil an hour in profit, almost completely AFK. Enjoy the video! So I'm going to show you two different setups. This setup here that I'm showing you now is the optimal setup and it might seem strange that a tier 87 decimation is the best weapon here but I will explain and break down how it is the best later in the video. So I use Armadil boots, gloves and helm purely because they don't do enough damage on you to need to have higher tier stuff and these are not degradable armors. I use Anima Core of Zamorok armor, however if you have an armadillo chest plate and legs that will work completely fine as well. Blood Fury necklace or any of the blood necklaces will be plenty of healing to pretty much keep you alive with the occasional use of an enhanced Excalibur. I use an Archer's ring as it's a nice cheap ring that doesn't degrade and provides a nice range bonus um, as I have my Luck of the Dwarves in my relic, however if you don't have that Luck of the Dwarves is another really nice alternative which just helps out with rare drop table drops. Um, the ranged kiln cape is the best if you do have it. it. I personally do not, so I use my max cape, and an Avas alerter will be just as good as well. As for my weapon I said earlier, I'm using the decimation as that is the best in slot weapon here, provided you can provide a few different things, which I'll get into in the breakdown. Uh, I also use a spring cleaner as it helps dismantle some of the junk drops and also breaks down some of the rune salvage that you get from here. And I also use the equilibrium aura which I'll explain why in the next couple of slides. So for this second set of worn equipment here, the only things that I have changed is the weapon. Um, use a Noxious Longbow, Royal Crossbow, or if you have an Eldritch Crossbow, however an Eldritch isn't really needed, I just didn't have any of the alternatives. It's also important that if you're using this setup, you do need to remember ammo, as the Decimation doesn't use any, and all of these weapons here will do. If you're using the Royal Crossbow, it is important to note that you're probably going to get a lot lower GP per hour rate. However, it will still be really, really AFK and good money, and it's a good way of making money to be able to buy yourself either a Noxbow or a Decimation in the future if you're just starting out. So when it comes to killing the Capsaris, it's your minimum hit or your average sort of hit which really makes the difference. And this is where the Decimation originally, it does look like it's going to be better than the Eldritch. For example, it says the Eldritch or even the Noxbow only has 117 damage, whereas the Decimation has 159. It also is fast rather than average, so its attack speed is faster. And in certain situations, it can be far, um, better kill rate. Um, so we'll show here on its own that it's not. So my minimum hit is 183, so it's going to take me most of the time, um, even when overloaded, my maximum hit is not going to go up by a massive amount. It will still take me two hits per kill pretty much to take out any of the Capsaris. So even when overloaded, my max hit is 196, so that's still going to be two hits pretty consistently. So if you're just going to be using this and no prayer or anything like that or aura, then the decimation is going to be worse. Whereas if you use an Eldritch, which is basically doing tier 90 damage here, um, I'm going to hit 360, which is my minimum hit I've got this dummy set to. So 8 or 9 out of 10 times using this, you will get a 1 hit, which is a much higher kill rate. Um, you can see it's doing tier 90 damage here because I'm only using Ascension Bolts, but if you wanted to do tier 92 damage, it does not increase your maximum hit by much. I go to 362 rather than 360. So you can tell, even though I'm using a um, ECB, it's basically going to be the same damage as a Nox. So I can show you now how you can make the Decimation as good as, if not better, than the Eldritch. So with the use of the Equilibrium Aura, um, you can bring your maximum hit now from all the way from 190 there was up to 326 for the minimum hit, which means you'll get much more consistent one hits. Bear in mind this is the minimum hit here. If I also turn on the Leech Range Strength Curse, that will increase my minimum hit even further to 340 which now pretty much guarantees you like a 9 out of 10 chance that you are going to one hit. However if you were still to be using a Nox or Eldritch or something that will now basically be a guaranteed one hit because now your maximum hit is 440 uh, for your minimum hit so it would be a guaranteed one hit every single time. However a 9 out of 10 chance at being a one hit, um, look there we go, 353, it's going to be pretty much one hitting almost every time unless you really do hit your minimum. If I put it onto just normal damage mode, 
we'll put it onto normal damage mode here now you can see that your average hit there you go that's above that's above it's going to be almost always above 375 however it does require a bit more upkeep and maintenance to be able to do this as you need to use your equilibrium aura although it does last two hours and if you extend it with viswax it can be extended up to four hours which is pretty awesome and you're going to want to use like an ancient elven ritual shard or something like that um, just to boost your um, range that uh, your prayer up so you can use the leech range strength curse but if you can do all that then you will get a faster kill rate with um, the decimation bow as it's got a faster kill uh, attack speed so you will be able to get more kills per hour so onto the useful perks here the only thing that you really need to be augmented is your weapon and on that I'd recommend using precise and equilibrium for sure as they both boost your minimum hit which increases your chance of a one hit if you're using ancient invention uh, perks then you can definitely get a nice combination with equilibrium and ruthless by using time worn components and it's pretty easy to get and the ruthless free perk will basically be a guaranteed seven and a half percent extra damage as your timer will never ever tick down as you're going to have the seven and a half percent all the time because you're killing them before the 20 seconds is up so that's a really nice extra damage bonus i also personally use scavenger as a perk um, it's not necessarily needed and doesn't increase your kill speed or anything it's just a nice perk to have as you might get some rare components your inventory setup is something that you can refine and perfect for yourself over time however this is what i personally use i use holy overloads as it gives me a bit of prayer restoration some aggression flasks an enhanced Excalibur just for occasional use when I need healing. I have the Slayer Codex for teleport to my player owned Slayer Dungeon, magic note paper to note all of the stuff I get, some placeholders of all the drops, and I've got in stars here at the bottom Prayer Restoration. So, this is if you're using the Decimation setup. You're going to want to have either an Elven Ritual Shard to restore your prayer every now and then, or bring some sort of prayer potions. You won't need very many as the prayer drain rate with a Holy Overload for the Leech prayer, uh, range strength curse is very very low when it comes to gathering the souls it is a fairly easy process you want to make sure you're gathering the capsarius souls so just go with some shabtis in your inventory into the ascension creature bit and this bit that i'm showcasing here has five of them that respawn fairly quickly and are fairly close together it can be quite a long and tedious process it took me about two hours to get myself the four souls that i needed for my player in dungeon and then you can just put them inside the large pen or even the small pen if you have it free and you can go ahead and kill away but you want to definitely make sure that you get the capsaris as they have the lowest hit points and therefore are easily one hitable when in legacy mode once you've gathered your Capsarius souls, you want to position them inside your personal Slayer dungeon. It doesn't really matter if you put them in the large or the small room, it doesn't make any real difference to your kill time per hour, as the aggression potion still manages to grab the aggro from all of them. It's only necessary to have four souls rather than a fifth one, as it just adds extra damage and they pretty much always respawn in time that you don't need the fifth one anyway. Um, inside the small room it will be slightly easier to get the loot as it will be closer to you however if you have a legendary pet use that and it will pick up a vast majority of the loot for you along with like the battle stabs and stuff and the only time you really need to click or do anything is when you see a keystone on the floor then you can just go grab it and note it in your inventory. These are a very very easy creature to pretty much completely AFK in your personal Slayer dungeon. They make absolutely awesome GP per hour, however it is a little bit RNG based, but over a long enough period of time it will average out to between 6 and 8 mil per hour. In fact I did a loot from 10,000 of these, there is a video on my channel and I managed to average over 10 mil GP per hour, however the price of the keystones has dropped a decent amount since then, I think they were pretty much at an all time high when I did make that. You can also get around 500k range XP per hour and you get about 300 crimson charms every hour or hour and a half. Therefore they're a very good way to just AFK gain summoning XP whilst making a very very good profit and a nice way to go all the way to 120 or 200 mil range if that's something that you are interested in. Thank you very much for watching guys. I really hope you did enjoy this guide and found it helpful. Um, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like and drop a comment down below and subscribe for all my future content. In the description down below, there's also links to my Discord server and my Twitch. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch as well, um, where I stream at least once or twice a week on there with various PVM and Iron Man related content. Until next time, guys, see ya.